All right, so today we are talking about the best camera money can buy. And best is a little bit subjective, you know? Like, best for what? Because cameras are tools. Sometimes you need something really small. Sometimes you just need the best image quality. But let's talk about the most cinematic best camera. Now, movies and TV shows are shot on all kinds of different cameras. But if we look at the last several years of movies that won an Oscar for best cinematography, pretty much all of them except for one was shot on an Airy Alexa. La La Land was shot on traditional film. Everything else, Harry Alexa. Now, I have some good news. I'm really excited about this. I'm not in my living room. If you look at the ceiling, oh, I can't get this tripod loose. Uh, you check it out, no roof. We are actually on a set. And look what we have right here, an Airy Alexa Mini that we've talked about a couple of times before. And oh, what's this? An Airy Alexa Mini LF. Oh, the brand new large format Airy Alexa in a compact body. Now people look at this and go, wait, why do they call it Mini? It's so big. Well, it's Mini because it's small compared to the full-size Airy Alexa LF. Now they're all awesome cameras and they all have different uses. It's hard to say one is better than the other because depending on your style of shooting and what you're shooting, you're gonna wanna choose one or the other or the other. But when it comes to pure technical ability, this one takes home the cake. I mean, look at this thing, obviously not something you wanna take to Disneyland to film your kids with, but what this camera is capable of, Oh! If we're talking about going bigger, then there is the Alexa 65, but you can't actually go out and buy that one. You can only get it from Airy Rentals on the duration of your project. But this LF right here, got a little spare change laying around, you know, just sell your house. They've given us two days in the studio to do whatever we want with. Can you believe that they trusted us here? Look at this. Yeah, I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so the way this camera sits right now, it's pretty much ready to go out and shoot a big Hollywood movie. So let me give you guys a little tour of this and maybe you could put it on your Christmas list. So let's just start from the back right here. We have our V mount battery, which is pretty standard. You could just push that button right there to release it. Now this camera requires a lot more power than your typical setup. So you do need a good high performance one. This is 26 volts. This one's only 100 watt hours. So this is not gonna last very long on this camera, but it'll work. You could also switch out this piece right here for a different battery mount if you wanna go with something like a gold mount. You may also notice that there's a bunch of antennas on here. Now this one here is for the wireless controller, which we're gonna get into in a little bit, but these four up here are for some of the built-in wireless features. And that's awesome because you don't have to have an extra device to send out a wireless video feed to another monitor. And then we come up here a little bit, we see a whole bunch of buttons and you might at first be like oh my god so many buttons this is confusing but they've actually done a really killer job at making it very simple and easy to figure out for example the first thing we need to figure out is how do you turn it on well we got some power on here so there's the power button the lights are turning on things are moving it's making sounds uh did we break it uh let's let's get out of here we come up here and this is the airy udm which stands for ultrasonic distance measure or something like i don't know so this thing is constantly getting a measurement of whatever the camera is pointed at. So right now we are pointed at that camera right over there. So it is giving us a readout of six feet, five inches. This thing can be pretty much mounted wherever, but right now it's just Velcroed onto the map box. This UDM can be mounted in a dozen different places. Right now we have it right here. Sometimes you put it on the map box or even underneath. As long as it has a clear line of vision to the subject, you can calibrate it wherever you decide to mount it. And hooking this up is pretty straightforward. You just hook this up into the EXT back here. So this connects it to the camera, powers this guy, and then it loops through over to here. So this is typically the side that the first AC stands or first assistant cameras, what that stands for. They're gonna be pulling your focus and they can use this as a reference to what this is measuring the distance to be at. So if I point the camera around, notice that it changes. So from here to that wall is about 16 feet. And also cine lenses will give you a marking of what it's currently focused at. So right now it's focused at about six feet, but the camera 
right there is eight feet and two inches away. So then you can kind of use that information and line that up. So that should be in focus. The lenses on here is an Airy Signature Prime, which is actually awesome. It's kind of a big deal of a lens. There's actually a lot to talk about when it comes to cinema lenses. So that's probably gotta be its own video. Would you guys be interested in seeing something like that? Like why cinema lenses are so amazing? And then we have our CLM4 focus motors right here. We have one for the focus right here and one for the aperture or iris. And these just plug in into here, the corresponding ones. So there's one for the iris right there and one for the focus right there. Now let's turn this around and you'll notice that everything is much simpler on this side because this is where the operator usually sits. So the operator just usually focuses on getting the shot, right? So there's only a few buttons here. There's a record button, a playback button, a lock button and then three user buttons. Now this viewfinder plugs into the viewfinder port that's labeled EVF and I can see my image through here. We've got two buttons right here. One is for camera. So if I hit that in this little viewfinder, I can adjust my frame rate, my shutter speed, white balance and my basic settings here. And then this viewfinder button right here is where I would hit to adjust my basic viewfinder settings like brightness. And on the top of the viewfinder, we have zoom and exposure. So zoom will help us get critical focus and exposure will give us false color to make sure our exposure is good. To get to the memory card, you just unlock it, hit that latch to open it up. There is a eject button on the card or drive itself and then you can pop it out. This thing is massive. This thing is like a brick. <laughs> you probably noticed by now that this is not a camera that you wanna operate by yourself. They do have a camera called the Amira that is very well designed for single operator but cameras like this is designed to be used with a full crew so you got your camera operator on this side and this is where your assistant is going to be looking at now this part is actually pretty straightforward so if we zoom into here we have our frame rate if we want to change that we can just tap on that and then we can just jog it down to different frame rates so we got our shutter angle right there which is just set to 180 degrees perfect that's where you want it most of the time and then your exposure index or basically your ASA or ISO 800 right there is good. Color is another thing that I love about Airy cameras is that there is the log C, which is kind of like your flat color profile, your log profile, so you can grade it. And then your look is just your basic 709. So when we're looking through the camera, everything looks nice and color graded already, but it's still recording in log C. So it's still a nice, very flexible, color gradable color profile. Now, one thing that's pretty cool is on Airy's website, there is a camera system simulator it's free to use so if you get booked on a job where there's going to be an area alexa on set you can pick out which area it is and you can just kind of fiddle around with the settings so you kind of get an idea of how to navigate through the camera and you'll see that it's actually pretty straightforward so yeah i'll throw a link in the description in case you're interested like i said it is free and if you're a nerd like me it's kind of fun and all this stuff can easily be controlled with this wcu4 hand unit which is awesome and since all the wireless stuff is already built into the camera Camera, you don't need to attach extra devices to pull focus or anything like that. It's already built in. You slap on a battery, slap on a lens, turn on the camera, and most of what you need is already on. Now this is an Alexa LF, which stands for large format. So the sensor is bigger than a traditional super 35 millimeter sensor. It's actually a tad bigger than a full frame sensor on a photography camera. But if you're used to traditional cinema cameras that have a super 35 millimeter sensor, you're gonna notice that all these lenses are gonna feel much, much wider. It's kind of like taking your focal length and making it two thirds. So this is a 75 millimeter, but it's going to feel more like a 50 millimeter. And these signature primes have Aries brand new LPL mount. Look how huge that rear element is. Now PL mount lenses have basically been the industry standard for as long as I can remember. And Airy made that back in the film days optimized for film cameras. But now that everything's going digital, the new LPL system is going to take advantage
advantage of being able to actually take that lens and seat it closer to the sensor, which is gonna give us more capable lenses like these Signature Primes. Now you still can use your traditional favorite PL lenses on this LPL mount with an adapter, but the way they mount is pretty much the same. Now on mount one, you just hold onto the lens and undo this latch right here. You rotate it and then it should slide right off. Here we go, and then I can lock it into place. We're gonna re-engage our motor here nice and tight. And now we have it seated, we are going to calibrate it before we do anything else so that it knows its new positions. I'm gonna throw this map box back on here. I'm gonna stick this back on here and we are good to go. All right, so now that that's all pretty much set up, the AC can kind of just hang back and chill and pull focus from back here. We're getting a wireless video feed over there because the wireless video transmitter is built into the LF and that's our little receiver right over there that's feeding into the monitor. So now we can just kind of hang back here and pull focus. But this unit itself is really freaking cool. And of course we are pulling manual focus. So that's important, right? So from here I can hit record. So now the camera is recording. And then right here is where we rack focus and you can see the measurements here as well as digitally on here. And then we have our T-stop right over here so we can open up up or close down and that looks right around good right there let's focus on the camera now one of the things I find really really cool is next to the focus mark see that little yellow bar right there that is our depth of field so as I adjust our t-stop see how that grows so now over here I'm gonna have much more depth of field everything in that yellow is going to be in focus and as I open it all the way up see we have a very narrow depth of field now and it's so cool having that information right on here now Sam's gonna be panning the camera back and forth and remember that UDM we had on there that distance measuring thingy that sits on top of the camera now check this out that information gets transmitted onto this controller now if you can see that green arrow that's moving around that is the UDM telling us the distance so that is also another indicator for the AC to reference while they're pulling focus. Ooh, another useful tool with this is focus mark. So I can set that right there. Let's say I wanna set a mark right there. I can mark it. And now every time I hit that mark, this controller vibrates. So in case you don't wanna stare at this, you wanna look at the screen. Every time it gets to a mark, you can feel it. Brilliant. So there's the gist of it and hopefully this has helped kind of demystify this camera a little bit for you. Now one of the questions I had for Ari is that now that there's so many other cameras out there that are shooting 4K, 6K, 8K, I mean spec wise they sound more impressive than the Ari. But why are pretty much most of movies and TV shows and commercials, anything you see on TV, why are they almost all shot on Ari cameras? And they basically gave me a whole rundown of everything that goes on behind the scenes to make this camera as cinematic and filmic as possible. And there's a lot of things, anything from inside the lens to how the sensor works to how the processing work, how the color screen, everything. There's so much and if I were to go over all that, this video would be ridiculously long. So let's just see how it looks. Let's turn it on and hit the record button. All right, I'm gonna shut off the light. We got Supermodel Steve over here. Now see this right here? I mean, this looks fine, right? It's kind of dimly lit, kind of a dramatic scene of Steve reading. But with the same setup, if I hit that record button on that Alexa LF, check this out. It looks so good. It, like, why does it look so good? I don't know. I can't tell if it's 
the camera or the performance that makes it look No, it's definitely the camera. The camera. You're just sitting there reading a book. You did nothing special, that as it, usual. That book is Lord of the Rings, though. Straight out of camera, like, this is how it looks. And it looks so good, just with no adjustments. That should be our gangster rap album title. Straight out of camera. <laughs> <laughs> so I posted this photo on Instagram and asked you guys for some questions. So let's see what you guys had to say. Alex asks, how does it sound? Uh, there is actually an audio in that almost looks like an XLR. It's like a four pin XLR. I don't even know what to plug into there, but there's some audio port in there. Ben has film says, but can you vlog with it? No, Carolyn asks, how heavy is it? Well, every time I need to get the camera up higher or lower, it's a, a massive pain. I think that's why they made the Alexa Mini LF so that you can just pick it up. Goldie's Dreams asks, how's the menu system? Easy to use or confusing? Well, you guys kind of saw a little mini walkthrough. Super simple. Is it better than the iPhone 11 Pro? <laughs> that is a video you would do. I think it's a little bit better. Jose says, do I really need both kidneys? I don't think so. You could totally live with just one. I mean, come on, do you see the footage? <laughs> it's worth it. Which car can you buy with the price of the Alexa LF? A any. Why doesn't it have autofocus? <laughs> well, even though autofocus is getting pretty dang good, it's never gonna be as good as a first AC that's really, really well trained. So when you're shooting on something like this, you're definitely gonna have a highly trained first AC pulling your focus, so that's gonna give you better results. How do the signature primes compare to the master primes? Actually, yesterday, I learned a whole bunch about lenses and what makes these signature primes so exciting, and these primes are awesome. And there's actually a lot to talk over, so that's probably gonna need to be, it's very own video all about cinema lenses in particular. But long story short, it's awesome. It's designed specifically for some of these super high resolution digital sensors, but at the same time keeping some of that classic filmic cinematic look that we all seen and love. How does it taste? Kind of like a parking meter. Midwest Mountain Biking says, what does it smell like? You guys ask some weird questions. Smells like Steve. <laughs>